Hello, and welcome to another edition of Ask the Professor, where we respond to your questions on everything from history to economics to political philosophy to current events. If it's on your mind, folks, send it in and the professor will talk about it. All right, here's one from Laurent, and he's asking, can our economy grow indefinitely, given the limits of the global ecosystem? And is there some way for progress to continue without endless growth? That is an excellent question. Uh, and, you know, in one sense, trivially, no. There there's, comes some point at which it must cease to grow. But the, the question is, is this, you know, 100 trillion people, 58 centuries in the future, or is this a practical problem for us in the lifetimes of our grandchildren? And the answer appears to be no. I'm going to give it a cautious no with a big asterisk. And the reason the answer appears to be no is that the fundamental driving force behind growth is creativity. And amazingly enough, people continue to think of new things. as the, It has been rather bluntly phrased. The Stone Age didn't end because we ran out of stone. And so the limits to growth, when resources start to impose constraints, it's generally true that people can find more efficient ways to use resources. They can find alternatives. They, the internal combustion engine rescued us from very serious limitations on growth because we were running out of land on which to grow hay to feed the horses and the major metropolises were being choked by horse manure, horse urine and horse carcasses. Now we tend to think of the car as being an environmental problem, but if it really is, ingenuity can get us around that. So in that sense, at least, I think we're okay. It's amazing how much better batteries are getting. We are having better fuel economy. We're getting better at finding, through fracking, hydrocarbon fuel. We looked like we were running out of the stuff at the time of the Club of Rome back in 1970. Well, who thought of that? But there's something deeper. I, I love the question because it also raises this very real issue of what it seems to me you can call the bicycle theory of the economy, that we have to keep pedaling or we're going to fall over. Because what if it turned out that creativity was more or less exhausted and that what we were going to see from now on was prosperity at the level we have now achieved. There wouldn't be any more great technological breakthroughs. You know, the iPhone 10 is going to be the last iPhone. Windows 10 is going to be the last Windows operating system. Your computer will never get smaller or faster. Would that be so bad? We live in a world where we seem absolutely convinced that it is. Politicians don't talk about prosperity, they talk about growth. The economy has to get bigger every year. But why? I mean, I'm sitting there in the back seat saying, are we there yet? <laughs> At what point do we acquire such amazing material wealth that we don't need more of it? You think back to the Middle Ages, one of my favorite periods in history. And in fact, there was growth, but it was slow. It was more or less imperceptible. It didn't occur to people that the economy was growing. They wanted a good harvest, not a bad harvest. They wanted security, not war and chaos. Um, they wanted comfortable, warm clothes, things like that. But the idea was that every life had its own fullness. You would be born, you would grow up, you would learn, you would become a responsible member of the community, you would have a family of your own. Ideally, you would reach a certain kind of serenity and wisdom in old age, and then you would pass on to what they fervently hoped would be your award, and another generation would come along. It was a model, at least, of a steady state society that was happy. And why is it, when we are so much wealthier than they were, that we are convinced that the only way we could ever possibly be happy or fulfilled is to get richer still? If you turned it around, you said, well, in the Middle Ages, they really needed more stuff. They couldn't be happy with what they had, or in Rome, or, you know, in Crete and the Minoan period, something like that. You could make that argument, and it's, it's we do today. We assume everybody must have been miserable until the electric light came along, if not the battery-powered toothbrush. Personally, I like the pre-sliced bagel. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think life before that was just not worth it. How could we have coped, right? Or the toast rack, Having for to instance. slice your own bagels, it's misery. You know, typewriters. But what makes us assume that we must now continue? It's a great Alexander Herzen, you know, progress is the goal. Who is this Moloch for whom we are toiling? Well, waist deep in the freezing mud, towing a barge and being told, oh, it'll be better after you're gone. But why isn't it better now? So I think it's a very real question. Why do we assume that we couldn't now go to a steady state at the level of prosperity that we have? Wonders that would have dazzled Louis XIV. 
So it seems to me, yes, the economy can continue. It could continue indefinitely with creativity, or we could simply run out of things to invent at a period when we invented so much stuff that we didn't really need much else. And every person would go through their own life cycle. And this is where meaning would be found, not in the idea that someday people would have stuff that would actually let them be happy. So I think we really need to examine that bicycle theory carefully because it has a frantic kind of pointlessness to it that you never stop and smell the roses. But the whole point was to grow roses that smelled good. We have roses that smell good. So why can we not settle down to life after life of happy gardening? instead of always rushing off to somewhere else that nobody can describe, that as soon as we get there, we have to run away from it. Life, each life should have meaning, and it seems to me that if each life can't have meaning, then the idea that future lives could have meaning is like trying to get rich by piling up counterfeit money. So, can the economy go on expanding indefinitely? Probably yes. Does it need to? No. It just doesn't. So, that's actually good news. It might sound like bad news, but it's good news. We're, we are there yet and it's a good place to be.